We are previewing UFC 158 here at SBR Forum Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. Sitting next to me is professional MMA odds maker Nick Kalikas. And on the phone, we're joined by Miguel Iterate. Both Nick and Miguel uh, are from MMAoddsbreaker.com. All right, now we're going to talk about Carlos Condit and uh, Johnny Hendricks. And, you know, Hendricks should be fighting GSP here, but he's not. He's facing Condit, and this is probably his, uh, his toughest fight to date, wouldn't you say, uh, Miguel? Uh, yeah, I would, de I would definitely say so. I think the thing that Condit brings, you know, uh, he brings, he, Condit is like an A-plus Martin Campman. if you give Martin mm -hmm. Camp, you know, uh, he made short work of Martin Campman, but he's a guy who brings a diverse attack, a lot of uh, unorthodox stand-up, they're good on the ground, um, and Hendricks has to come out and control the fight. Um, he's got to make sure that it doesn't go to the ground unless he wants it to. Um, if the guy's coming after him to take him down, good luck. And he's got those hands where he's going to try to get off with his big punch. Um, I think it's actually a better fight than um, Hendricks and Ellenberger and, uh, you know, uh, Condit's original fight as well. I, I, I think this fight is, is the, the Knicks got right on, on in terms of I, I don't really know if I could pick a winner. It's just going to be who can execute their game plan because they're very different athletes. Yeah, I mean, Hendricks is, is on an amazing streak, and he's uh, minus 135 are the odds. So Hendricks is a, is a small favorite. Uh, Nick, what, what action have you taken on this so far? Uh, it, uh, action early on did come in on Carlos Condit in the line drop. Really? I opened at 150, and it dropped down to like 125, 130-ish. Mm -hmm. And now, again, we're seeing some action back in on uh, Johnny Hendricks here, too. So it's probably going to say ballpark. We might actually see the line increase a little bit more on Hendricks. Um, I think it could climb up past 150, 160 um, on fight day. But it is a hard fight to call because real, realistically, this is the hardest test, like you said, yeah. for, uh, for Johnny Hendricks to date. And, you know, this, this means a lot because if he wins this fight, he definitely gets yes. the title shot. Yes. But if he doesn't, he goes not in the back of the line, but he, he takes a, definitely yeah. a few steps back. So, and, and Carlos Condit's coming into, into form. I think he just keeps on improving. I mean, he's been in the game for a long time. So he, he does have that experience factor over sure. Johnny Hendricks. At this point, though, where they are at this level, experience isn't going to matter too much, right. honestly, because they're both, they both have that. But I think the complete overall fighter, the better fighter of the two, is definitely Carlos Condit. Mm -hmm. But the problem is the way they match up. I mean, right. you're talking about Johnny Hendricks, which I don't have to really mention his wrestling credentials. I mean, it's, it's definitely one of the better um, records in the UFC wrestling-wise. So he's going to have that ability to dictate where the fight goes and he's going to be able to put him on his back. Now, on his back, though, Condit is pretty slick with submissions. I don't think he's going to probably sub Johnny Hendricks, though. I think uh, his defense is it's keen enough to avoid, again, most of the stuff here. And, but on the feet, even if Hendricks does have that power edge, I mean, he's been knocking people out, nasty knockouts. I mean, quick. You see what he did in his last fight against Cameron. I mean, that was just crazy, the power that he has. So he could definitely knock people out, but I, I still give the point advantage, at least, to Carlos Condit mm -hmm. standing up as well. So no matter where Johnny takes this fight, I think he's going to have a little bit of difficulty, but he should, again, almost like the St. Pierre Diaz fight, he should edge out the decision. I don't really see a stoppage in this fight. I think both of them are, are tough enough to kind of withstand whatever each has to throw at each other. So it's probably going to go to the cards, and if so, you have to favor the wrestler. I mean, just common sense. But as far as the bet goes, I really can't touch this fight because, again, I'm on the fence going back and forth who wins this fight. So there, if you really – can't determine, um, I think, a clear winner, then you should pass the fight. Right, right. So that early action on Condit, was that from, from just like public guys who, who are fans of his, or was that from sharp guys who thought well, saw again, value? It's going to be some of the smaller betters that are, mm -hmm. aren't necessarily dummies, though, either right, as well. Right, right. So you're going to get some square action mixed in with some you know, smaller sharp action as well. So I think that uh, people recognize that Condit is uh, an interesting matchup. So again, it's one of the situations I think if you're getting a good price on Condit, it's one dog or pass. So you're going to have to bet the dog or just not lay the juice, I think, in this fight, even though I do favor Hendricks by decision here the, the bottom line is is his his the power in his hands he seems to retain it throughout the entire fight uh, at least the way he's been going he's knocked people out late he's knocked a couple of people out very early um so he's going to be dangerous throughout the fight with his number one weapon whereas i see condit's best chance at submissions being earlier in the fight to maybe catch something i don't think either of them is going to tire uh faster than the other. I think they're going to wear each other out. They think they're both going to be tired heading into the championship rounds, huffing and puffing, and then we're not going to see a finish. We're going to go to a decision, and then it's anybody's ball game. Hmm. All right. So if you had to make a bet on this one, what would it be? I'm going to bet Condit. Really? Condit at plus 115. Nick, you think you're going to be uh, uh, basically even on this? Yeah, I think it's going to be another fight that gets a, a lot of a action lot of both action. ways right, because right. both guys are extremely, extremely respected from the betting public, from the MMA diehards. So it's going to be pretty close. Um, 
I do but think I'm, we're probably going to need Cotton to come through as well. So, mm -hmm. again, I think if you're going to bet this fight, it's probably dog or whatever plus money you get. But, you, again, in a situation like this, it, it, unfortunately for me, it's going to be a pass unless it skyrockets. If Hendricks hits minus 200, which could. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's you so much so? steam. Yeah, it could. Really? There's, uh, typically, if his fights, if you look back to in the history, he does get uh, late steam. Mm -hmm. I mean, Hendricks in his last fight as well steamed up to over 200. So I think that there's a possibility. I doubt it does hit this, like we said, with the respect factor on both sides here. But there is that chance. And I think if one person's going to get steamed, it's probably going to be Johnny Hendricks. Now, if he does reach up to 200, there might be worth it. That far, you think yeah, it can go? it's possible. I, I really? do think so, yeah. I mean, the public hype and with, you know, the maximum wagers that come in on fight day, a lot of times, you know, the books will get drilled by five, six, ten people betting the max bets. Right, so right. It, it does. They do steam up uh, the line sometimes. So. If that's the case, I do think it's probably going to be Hendricks that uh, does get the scene. All right. Well, we'll see. Uh, Miguel Iterate, I put a gun to his head, and he said, Carlos Condit, Nick, it's a pass for me. Definitely, it's a pass. Let's move on to Mark Ward and Ellenberg, okay?